Hello, guys. I'll go through some of the questions from quiz one that were not so easy. Well, uh, let's start with question three. In this question, you were asked to find out what the hourly wage rate was in the gasoline sector for the home country. And for this, we'll use the equation wage is equal to value of marginal productivity of labor in the gasoline sector. And value of marginal productivity of labor is defined as price into marginal productivity of labor. And marginal productivity of labor is the inverse of the unit labor requirement. Right? So wage really turns out to be price of gasoline divided by the unit labor requirement in the gasoline sector. And since the price is 9 and ALG is 3, this turns out to be 3. So the answer in this case is A. Uh, in this uh, question, they ask if there would be any specialization by the large country. Well, if it's a large country, then it would produce both the goods and there would be incomplete specialization in the large country where a small country would specialize in the production of a one good. Let's just take an example. Well, if this was a supply function and if home country was a large country, then the demand function would intersect at this point and uh, where home country would produce both the goods and foreign country would specialize in the production of a good. So in this case, we would have a complete specialization in the small country case, but incomplete in the large country case. Uh, this question is asking, what if the terms of trade were the same for country F? Uh, for country F, what this is really asking you is that if the terms of world terms of trade, which means the price in the world market after this country opens up to trade, is equal to what it was before it started trading, so the price under autarky then would this country gain from trade? Well, if this was the production possibility frontier for this home, for the country F before trade, and it was on this indifference curve at this point, after trade, there is no change in the price line, right? So there would be no change in status. The country F would be at the same point on its indifference curve. So in that case, country H, but not country F, uh, would gain from trade. So generally, prices have to be different. Uh, the world prices have to be different from the closed economy prices for there to be gains. Uh, in this question, you're being asked, uh, there are two countries, they open up to free trade, and you're being asked, well, does Switzerland produce scraps and how much? Uh, first of all, we want to know if uh, Switzerland produces scrap in the first place. So we want to know, well, what is the optionally cost of producing this good? If you haven't been specified, we, you would always, we would always assume that the two countries that we are talking about are large countries and of equal sizes, relatively equal sizes. So what is the opportunity cost in this case? Well, it's 10 divided by 5 for Switzerland and 12 divided by 9 for, for France. Two. Right. Uh, so as we can see, uh, France has a lower opportunity cost of producing traps. So, France is going to specialize in the production of this. It's going to produce zero chocolates, whereas Switzerland would specialize in the production of chocolates and produce zero amounts of crepes. So the answer in this case is A. This is an interesting question. It's asking you uh, for a ratio, and it's asking you, well, compare the wages in the home country and wages in the foreign country. Well, to begin with, it looks a little difficult, but it's not really. What you need to uh, do is use the same equation. Wages in the home country is going to be equal to the value of marginal priority of labor of the good that it produces. And for the foreign country, it would be exactly that, value of the marginal priority of labor that the foreign country produces. So we need to know after trade, uh, what are the goods that they specialize in? So what are the goods that they produce? Right. So uh, let's just calculate the opportunity cost of producing cheese in the two countries. Home countries, one by three, and foreign countries, five by four. Right, one point something. Now, what, what, what we uh, have here is um, uh, opportunity cost, which is lower in the home country. So home country would specialize in the production of cheese, and foreign country would produce whiskey, right? Uh, so in the home country, wages would be equal to the price of cheese divided by the unit labor requirement of cheese. That's the value of, of marginal value of labor, right? In the foreign country, it would be price of wine divided by A L. Sorry, whiskey A L W star. Right? So this boils down to uh, 20 divided by 1 over 
20 divided by 4. So 20 divided by 5, which is equal to 4. So this is your answer, right? So what we did in this case is uh, we first tried to figure out what are the two goods that these countries specialize in. Each country would produce one good, one good that they have comparative advantage in producing. Once we know that good, we know what the wages would be in that country. Right? Let's go to the next question. In this case, we are being asked in the regarding model, the country opens up to uh, trade and then it has these as the world prices. Well, this is the production possibility frontier. Wherever the price line, the world price, hits the production possibility frontier, that's how much they would produce. This is where they consume. So they're producing 120 units and they're consuming 60 units. What do they do with the rest? Which is 120 minus 60 equal to 60. Well, they export that good. So our answer is they produce 120, they consume 60, and they export 60 units of. So the answer here is E. Okay. So, uh, is the required model supported by uh, empirical evidence? And the answer is yes. Uh, please look in the slides. If a very small country trades the large country according to the regarded model, would it benefit or not? Well, uh, it's uh, exactly the same as the previous question. If it is a large country and it opens up to trade with a small country, the large country's autarky prices would define what the world price be. So for a large country, since the world price are going to be the same as its closed economy prices, there are no gains to be made. Right? So, but it doesn't lose from free trade, it just does not gain. Right? So the small country only will enjoy gains from trade in this case. All right, thank you guys. I hope that helped.